So I'd like to start to move us towards the part here where we get to the burden of disease on patients and measuring exacerbation and so on. But before we do that, we've covered a tremendous amount of this. But just kind of to bring this, you know, in aggregate together, you know, this discussion about combination therapies and so on. Um, I have a two-part question for everybody, which is, when do you consider triple therapy and what was your advice to, because you brought this up earlier, to PCPs who are flirting with the idea of triple therapy? I, I think that the, the answers to that question are, if you have someone who continues to struggle on a llama lava, continued exacerbations, continued problems with, with their breathing, uh, that moving to a triple is a, is a perfectly reasonable approach. If the eosinophil count is high enough. If it's not low enough, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. probably even more See, so. See, there I thought yeah. I was listening. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 the eosinophil count has greater negative predictive value, so a low I, one, I you're much that. less likely to get a benefit yeah. from the health yeah. steroid. Anything to add to his? Yeah, so I mean, the, the question is, out of the gates in somebody who's just been on short-acting inhalers or on nothing, when do you start it? Or when, do, it's easier to say when you increment from a double llama yep. lava. Okay, and that's somebody and that's who, who continues to exacerbate, particularly sure. if they have high eosinophil levels. So it's a no-brainer. You've had three steroid tapers or one hospitalization, and your eosinophil counts are greater than 200. There's, you know, it, no, there's no controversy. That person needs to be on a triple. If they just had one or two outpatient exacerbations and they have lower eosinophil levels, now I'm not. If, if somebody who's a frequent exacerbator, two, three exacerbations, hospitalizations, one, two. We're gonna give a trial of an ICS on top of the Lama Laba uh, to see if we can suppress that. And so, you know, I know we like rigid cutoffs and rigid guideline therapies, but in, in reality, we're factoring in multiple different components of this disease and ultimately making that decision. Right out of the gates, it's a little bit different of a story. You know, again, I think, Somebody who comes in similarly, frequent exacerbations, high eosinophils, I might start them straight on the triple. But somebody who's had a couple exacerbations and they've only been on short-acting bronchodilators just needs, may need the, they need to be maximally bronchodilated and may not need the inhaled corticosteroid. So often those folks will start with the dual bronchodilator and then consider the ICS down the line if that doesn't hold them. And I think we all agree with that. I think the one issue that is complicated is the person who has not been adequately treated who comes in with a hospitalization because we recognize the power of those hospitalizations not just from the from what happens to the to the quality and indeed the quantity of lives of these people going forward but the cost issues that are involved as well the issue of rehospitalizations and stuff and certainly arguments could be made that in that subset you might be be important to think about moving to the triple sooner